Hey everyone, welcome back to The Art of Etude. Uh, it's cool to be back since uh, I'm going to be taking this series in a fresh direction in that in the next little while I'm going to be covering the 24 Caprices by Pierre Rode, or Rod, who was a French violinist and a uh, contemporary of Beethoven. Why? Mm -hmm. Well, these particular etudes have played an especially uh, prominent role in my development as a violinist early on. Revisiting them now for you guys, I actually find them to be rather beautiful and uh, musically more substantial than the average etude or caprice. And um, they can serve as very effective vehicles to not only develop specific techniques, but also your tone and all aspects of your musicality. Anyway, there's just a lot of good stuff to be covered in these upcoming videos, and I'm gonna be coming at you with uh, my personal tips, tricks, uh, opinions, you name it, which I'm sure at least some of which uh, you'll find useful and will be able to apply elsewhere. All right, let's get into it. As you would notice, it starts with a slow lyrical cantabile section, which transitions into a faster martile section titled Moderato. Let's start with the Moderato section first for its uh, more straightforward nature. The first key point is that you want to be able to think long lines and long phrases to keep a vision of the ups and downs, where you want the phrase to go, and yet always maintain a very consistent and efficient start for each and every stroke. So the basis of the Martelet stroke um, I think I started covering this in episode three. Uh, you can check that out. But anyway, you really want to grab hold of the string and immediately release. Let the string go free and resonate. As you get more and more used to this, you can vary things out, such as you know adding more length gradually to the stroke or vice versa. Uh, experiment with the speed of bow. Which brings me to the second key thing. Even though you are doing a martile, it's necessary to maintain a lightness and fluffiness in the stroke, which is appropriate uh, to the character of this section. Also, on another note, a lot of people have asked me how I'm able to trill so fast and consistently. I would say that the most important thing is to get rid of as much tension as possible in the actual mechanism. I also think it helps to think of the motion as a sort of flick off the fingerboard rather than an actual active placement of the finger. Let's go back to the slow section, which happens to be my favorite thing about this caprice. Lyricism on a string instrument is something so essential, perhaps the most important thing, which uh, we will spend all our lives developing. The way I think about it is the, the ability to weave something out of your sound, which is truly three-dimensional, which embodies vividly uh, an idea, a state, or an emotion. Just like how a great singer unfolds a phrase or a great actor's diction. I think this aspect of playing is just so much more demanding than playing fast or technical acrobatics. And for me is the defining factor uh, that separates the good players from the really good players and from the truly great players. I mean, often I only need less than a few seconds of listening to someone to know which category they belong to. The very first building block of lyricism is developing good tone. What is good tone? Well, before anything, I think that the right arm is king. And that is not only the source of the sound, but also the impetus for expression and phrasing. And the left hand subsequently is there to support it and to give extra dimension. But to achieve a good tone, both the left and right hands have to work together to present something seamless and whole, something that can be perceived as one entity, where no one element, like vibrato for instance, sticks out or is more noticeable out of the whole picture. 
it doesn't matter what kind of sound or color you're going for. I just believe that there is always a natural correlation between the two hands to be achieved. So after saying all that, something like this slow section in this first Caprice by Road becomes your playground. There is just so much to experiment with and this is why I like these Caprices. Um, I will have the chance to go uh, more and more in depth about this since so many of the other Road Caprices have uh, slow sections like this one. But already, just go ahead and experiment with phrasing, with sound colors, trying to envision something clearly in your head and reproducing it as faithfully as you can on the instrument. Is the sound blooming the way I want? Uh, how much vibrato do I really need to achieve this certain color, etc. Also, I think a good thing to get used to is always envisioning or thinking over what you're about to play in your head before you actually play it. And in this section, it's very important to pay attention to the little notes to make sure that they at least have the same life or activity as the longer notes. Just give them some love. I mean, you can experiment with rhythmic flexibility, just the way you pace. So I'm going to leave it at that since uh, it's probably a lot of info to take in already. But if you found this video useful or thought provoking or just enjoyable, uh, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to keep up with upcoming episodes and uh, other content. If you have a question or if you want some help on a particular passage, let's say in these etudes or elsewhere, let's say in your piece that you're working on at the moment, please feel free to message me on Facebook or Instagram. And if you want to take that even further, you can put yourself on video, hashtag Art of Etude, and tag me on Instagram. My handle is at Kirsten Leong. After all, this is the Art of Etude, and I'd be very happy to interact with you and uh, share some tips. Gonna get me some ice cream. See you next time.